the Idle Valley Wetlands Reserve in North Nottinghamshire. It's a mosaic of lakes, woods and farms splashed across an ancient floodplain and one of England's most important wildlife havens, home to vast flocks of overwintering wildfowl, unusual species such as shelled duck and egrets, rare vagrants like this glossy ibis. It's one of the richest birding sites in the region. A part has been designated as a site of special scientific interest. It was selected as one of the locations to reintroduce beavers into the UK. The reserve is popular with walkers, families and foragers. At a time of biodiversity emergency, when we've already lost 85% of our wetlands and 70% of our wildlife, in a country repeatedly described as one of the most nature depleted, this rural idyll is literally a breath of fresh air. But it's under threat. The landscape was created, restored and rewilded years ago using waste fly ash dumped from nearby power stations. Now there's a proposal to dig it all up again. It's renowned throughout the country and bird watchers from all over come to visit uh, the Idle Valley Nature Reserve and this will actually rip the heart out the middle of this place. We are 200 yards from the coal face here of where they are going to be digging. And we're going to have industrial uh, diggers uh, dipping trucks on veil belts for 25 years. Fly ash is an ultra-fine dust used as an additive in cement. Depending on the application, it can help lower emissions. But as a waste product, it's often contaminated, and dust and pollution is almost inevitable from a project like this. We've got the lovely Idle Valley to take walks every day with all the nature, and it's just going to all be completely ruined. We everybody who lives around here likes how quiet it is now, lovely, and the views and all that's going to happen is noise pollution, um, along with the dust. I'm a severe asthmatic, so for me, I don't know what it's going to um, be in the air and what I'll be inhaling. The Derbyshire Angling Club owns the immediately adjacent lake. Their experience is that scum can form underwater. They're concerned over the welfare of the anglers, the wildlife, and of course the fish. In spite of its status as a nature reserve, industrial activity continues in and around the Idle Valley. Additional traffic would be a big worry. Villagers say their narrow streets are not compatible with big trucks. This village is used often by cyclists, walkers. We have the um, Retford Half Marathon. Traffic fumes are already a major cause of illness and death, especially in school-aged children. Water pollution is another concern. Lying in the midst of wetlands, the Idle Valley is prone to floods. A spill or a flood could contaminate a vast area of agricultural land. Residents wonder who might be held to account, especially as this particular project promoter appears to have no track record in quarrying or mining. When a nearby tyre recycling plant went up in flames, it deposited a swathe of carcinogenic ash across nearby fields right at harvest time. Across the region, Councils are allowing farmland and natural spaces to be converted into housing estates and industrial parks. Land use conversion accounts for a third of the causes of global warming and for most biodiversity loss. Scientists say we need to preserve and protect between 30 and 50 percent of the Earth's surface. We need nature for our health, our sanity, for biodiversity, to aid climate control and to maintain the integrity of the ecosystem that we're all part of. But it is a dilemma. How do you choose between reducing emissions and saving nature when we need both? The whole point of cutting our emissions and reining in our consumer lifestyle is to restore the balance of nature. But it simply can't be done if we continue to destroy it. There are alternatives to fly ash. There are alternative ways of reducing emissions in cement production. And there are alternatives to this particular site. But there is no alternative to nature. It's our life support system. The County of Nottinghamshire has a fine track record in restoring the scars of its industrial past. It seems perverse to step backwards and dig it all up again. Profit seeking by developers, the possibility of a few jobs, seems scant compensation for the destruction of nature, the loss of wildlife, increased traffic and 25 years of disruption to village life. In England, we've already destroyed most of our natural spaces. In this rural part of North Nottinghamshire, it's time to say, enough is enough.